Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video we're going to be doing homeostasis and we're going to focus in on insulin and how it regulates your blood glucose level. Now this video is for both grade 11 and grade 12. Grade 12s, please don't forget that this is all examinable in both your mock exams and in your finals. Now, what's interesting about today's video is that we're actually going to work out of one of my pages from my cheat sheet study guide. It's the same page in both grade 11 and grade 12 study guides, and I thought that I'd love to show you the inside of what it looks like, and if you have the study guide, I can now walk you through it as you use it. The guide is filled with so many of these summaries, simplifications, and most importantly, the pro tips that get you distinctions based off of my examiner knowledge and my marking knowledge at the end of the year for matric finals. And if you'd like to get a copy of the Cheat Sheet Study Guide, it is available on my website, missangler.co.za in both English and Afrikaans. So let's dive in to our glucose insulin. So First things first, when we are in an exam setting, they are probably going to give you a situation. They're not going to tell you that the person needs a specific hormone. They might say, um, we have just eaten a meal. Explain how the human body regulates the blood glucose level. It's from here that you are expected to know that because you have been eating, you are now going to use insulin. So you're expected to know that. So, where do we begin our explanation? Well, first things first, we always need to begin our explanation with some kind of stimulus. And the stimulus is an increased blood glucose level because you've eaten your food. Now, that blood that is raised in glucose, it's going to pass through your pancreas. Now, your pancreas, remember, is an endocrine gland. And it has the, it actually has two really cool abilities being an endocrine gland. It has the ability to secrete out a hormone, but it also has the ability to sense. And it uses, in this case, it is going to use its beta cells. And those beta cells are going to detect there is an increase in the glucose of your bloodstream. Now, we now need to create number four which is the response. And the response is going to, be cre to create insulin. Insulin is then going to be sent to your liver and your muscles, and they are going to absorb more glucose. Because the danger of having too much glucose in your bloodstream is you could go into a sugar coma, which I know sounds amazing. You know, you've eaten all the sugar, must be amazing, but it can lead to um, blood clots. It can lead to blindness. It's a very serious condition, so we don't want to go into a sugar coma. And what happens is, most importantly, the liver does a lot of hard work here. It converts glucose to glycogen. And please remember the spelling for glycogen. Focus on the co and the gin, please, because we often confuse glycogen with glucagon. They're very similar in spelling, and in the final exam, you must have the correct spelling. And it's the same for grade 11s. If you confuse glucagon with glycogen, and you don't get the spelling perfect, your teacher doesn't know which one you're talking about, and they're not going to give you the mark that you deserve, and they're going to mark it wrong. Now, the liver has converted all of this excess glucose into glycogen, and what's going to happen is, step six, our blood glucose levels are going to drop. Now, for most schools and most teachers, you could probably stop at six, but for seven, and generally when we are speaking about grade 12 level, you would go to this final level where negative feedback causes insulin to drop. Because remember, you never want high levels of hormones all the time, right? You want to keep them at a nice homeostatic level. So you've got to bring it down. So negative feedback means we have dropped the sugar. And once the sugar gets low enough, that causes the insulin to also drop and return back to normal. Now, 
at the end of your answer, you always need to be aware of the results. And so that's going to be your blood glucose levels are going to decrease and your cellular respiration is going to increase. And a lot of pupils leave this off their answer or they weren't even aware that specifically this second point that cellular respiration is going to increase. And if you were uncertain about where it's happening more, Let's go back to step five. Remember that the liver is absorbing glucose, but the muscles are also absorbing glucose. And what they do is they use that extra glucose and they burn it and they use it in cellular respiration to, remember, to transform it into energy. Now, in order to get full marks, I always like to look at the pro tip bubbles. These are tips that are curated and based off of final matric exams and what gets you the marks and what doesn't. And, and the most common mistakes. Always mention the effect insulin has on the glucose level in the bloodstream. You must always say it's decreasing or increasing it. You must always be specific when stating where glucose is stored. And that's an interesting one because a lot of pupils don't do that. They just go, glucose is stored. And then you wonder, why don't I get the mark? I was right. Yes, you are right. Glucose is stored. But you must show your expertise. You must show your depth of understanding. It's stored in the liver and the muscles. And lastly, we must understand negative feedback very well for this topic. Now, I have separate videos on negative feedback, and I've linked it above now on the introduction to the endocrine system. If you want to go back and have a look at that, I've updated that video just in case you're not so sure about how negative feedback works. And if you do have the cheat sheet, there is a beautiful template answer that is in all cheat sheets, specifically for grade 11 and 12, where we use it the most often, where you can use... Um, the template to answer any endocrine or homeostasis process in a well-answered order. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. The follow-up video to this is going to be homeostasis and how glucagon influences glucose. I'll see you all again soon. Bye!